After watching past lessons, I bet many of you were surprised that it was possible to collect so many achievements and shoot down so many enemy planes in a single battle using that basic biplane you start off with. It is. There are no two ways about it. Tons of experience and the honed reflexes of our experts play a big part. On the other hand, the key to success is understanding the hows and whats of marksmanship, knowing how to aim properly, understanding why, this is what we're about to look at. To start off, let's go over a bit of theory. Aircraft weapons are mounted not only in the nose, but also in the wings. They're pinched in towards each other a bit to compensate for the distance between them, something that is called horizontal convergence. That convergence results in a point to which all the rounds coming from your guns will meet. Obviously, at that distance, you are at your most effective. The reverse is also true. Misjudge that distance and you may find yourself missing even at point-blank range when aiming right at your target. Such lucky strikes can happen theoretically, of course, but in reality, your enemies will not be so willing to give themselves up. You can choose your horizontal convergence for distance anywhere between 50 and 800 meters, either in a menu or when choosing your plane directly before a battle. Let's see how that works. First, here are weapons converging at 50 meters, here at 400 meters, and here at 800 meters. Which should you choose? For arcade battles where the aim assist marker shows up at 800 meters, go for 500 to 600 meters. For realistic battles where players usually try to save ammo and open fire only when they're close to each other, 400 meters is a good option. In addition to horizontal convergence, there is also vertical convergence. The idea here is a bit different. Rounds in the game, just as in real life, fly along a ballistic trajectory, meaning that they are affected by gravity. Some are affected more than others, depending on their caliber, mass and aerodynamic qualities. To compensate for that effect, different weapons are aimed a little higher so that rounds from different types of weapons all meet at a single point. That is called vertical convergence. Let's try shooting with a Focke Wolf A5. It has two types of weapons, 20mm cannons and 8mm machine guns. Without convergence, as you can see, rounds fall below the target, with some calibers falling faster and steeper. With convergence, the trajectories of your rounds will meet at a single point. However, there are also disadvantages to vertical convergence. At close ranges, rounds will fly high, often overshooting the target. This is particularly noticeable when you are in a fighter diving at an enemy plane. In our opinion, the vertical convergence is important when a plane has multiple weapons on board with different calibers, otherwise it will just mess up your aim. Try turning it on and off to get a feel for what works best for you. Also remember that our favorite aim assist markers are calibrated to your chosen type of vertical convergence in the arcade mode. Simply speaking, you don't have to do any additional compensating for distance as the marker does that for you. The last thing you should probably know is about the parallax effect. Without delving too deeply into theory, parallax refers to the fact that when you're aiming directly at an enemy plane at short ranges, your sights are actually a bit lower. What that means is that you need to aim a bit above your enemy. This only affects the third-person view. You're fine when you fly using the first-person view, though. So, we have taken care of the technical part. Now, let's move on to practical skills. So you're up there and you see your first target. We recommend locking onto him using the X key. This means it will always be shown in your radar in white. If you lose sight of the target, an arrow will show up to tell you where you can find it. The altitude advantage is crucial in realistic battles, as it is easier to attack someone flying below you. That's also fair to say in arcade mode, though it isn't as important. The enemy aim assist marker makes you an easy target and flying higher won't save you from a good marksman anyway. In theory, you can hit an opponent from about a kilometer away. The probability of that happening, however, is not high. While your rounds fly through the air, they will lose energy and inflict much less damage. The enemy aircraft might also suddenly change directions too. At that distance, you should only really shoot at land-based, non-mobile and lightly armored targets. 
The kill distance for aerial targets is 400 to 600 meters. Wait until you can get closer and don't overheat your guns too early. Also, don't shoot in long bursts. Overheated weapons sometimes jam, forcing you to wait while they clear. It is much more effective to fire in short bursts, keeping an eye out on the red indicators around your sights that tell you how hot your guns are. If your guns still jam, reload them using the Y key. That will take care of the problem. As far as the target lead is concerned, it might seem that the arcade marker takes care of that. In general, that is true, but there's still one problem spot. Take slightly more lead than the interface recommends. This is because the marker indicates where the center of the plane will be when your rounds get there. Likewise, you will hit the central and rear part of your enemy's fuselage if you shoot directly at the center of the marker. If you go for a spot a bit farther than the marker, you will increase the hit coverage area. Now, let's talk about the rounds themselves. There are four types – armory piercing, incendiary, high explosive and tracer rounds. Armor-piercing rounds are simply molded bars of hard metal that can pierce the plane's hull. They can deal serious internal damage to modules if you can score a hit with them. High-explosive rounds got explosives inside that detonate an impact. They are not particularly effective against armored targets, though they are deadly against light fighters that they literally blow to bits. Tracer rounds are light shells that leave a trail behind them. They help you aim at your enemy, though they don't do much damage. Finally, incendiary rounds have flammable compound inside that ignites an impact and lights your enemies on fire. Various selections of rounds in the game are called ammunition belts and are basically different combinations of rounds for different combat situations. For land-based targets, for aircraft, for armored targets. Tracer ammo is less effective as it includes tracer rounds that do less damage. Belts for stealth attack, on the other hand, do not include tracer rounds, being set up for experienced pilots who know where their rounds are headed. When you're up against fighters, we recommend taking belts for aerial targets, while belts for armored targets are better when fighting heavy bombers like the American B-17. The armor-piercing incendiary tracer ammunition is very popular, for example. It includes tracer rounds, while an incendiary mix gives you the chance to set your enemy on fire. The armor piercing potential, however, is lower as compared to regular ones. There is less of that dense metal in them to make room for the active chemical components used to create fire. You will probably figure out what you like best at some point during the game. Try experimenting from time to time. To wrap up our talk on shooting, we have to mention the onboard gun turrets employed by bombers. By default, they are handled by a somewhat inaccurate bot, especially when the crew is not very experienced. If you are under heavy attack from fighters, it's probably worth taking matters into your own hands. Use the F6 key, then F3 to go back. Convergence for onboard turrets works the same way as for directional weapons. If an enemy is attacking from above, aim below him. If from below, then aim in front of him. If a fighter is on your tail, but at the same altitude as you, aim just as you would with a directional weapon, taking into account your convergence, of course. Of course, you can give your gunners practice in the crew tab, start off by boosting their accuracy and compactness, as well as their vitality, of course. That's about everything we wanted to tell you about mastering the art of shooting in War Thunder. Of course, your speed, motor skills and experience are also important. Regardless of that, you will notice an appreciable difference in your shooting if you put into practice some of the things you've learned from this video. Good luck in the skies!